live from Las Vegas. It's the Q, covering Oracle's modern marketing experience. Brought to you by Oracle. Now here's your host, John Furrier and Peter Burris. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Las Vegas for Oracle's Modern Marketing Experience 2016. The hashtag is MME16. This is theCUBE, Silicon Angle's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract a signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host, Peter Burris, head of research. And our next guest is a fellow researcher himself, Bruce Rogers, who's the Chief Insight Officer at Forbes Media. Welcome to theCUBE, great to have you. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks for spending the time to come on. We'd love to, to analyze and opine and connect the dots, provide the data, extract the signal from the noise. And this marketing space is dynamic because is it an ad tech marketing show or is it a software show? Or both? And it's, is, uh, it, is it really got the platform? Does it all hang together? Certainly on paper it looks good with Oracle. Um, people want to integrate more and more data they want more insights. How does the CMO make sense of this show? What the first take? Yeah, that's a good point. So, um, so part of what I do at Forbes, um, having spent most of my career at Forbes running worldwide marketing, I, I started our research division, Forbes Insights, several years ago. And um, part of that is what I call our CMO practice, which is research editorial and events for marketing leadership. And I also write for Forbes, as, <laughs> as do you. Um, and so I get, I have the great good fortune and privilege to talk to literally hundreds of CMOs around the world. Um, CMOs, the, the whole role is uh, undergoing one of those you know, incredibly overused words of transformation, but it just happens to be true. Um, the, the customer is leading that transformation and the, and the traditional ways of connecting with customers is, has been disrupted. And the um, ways to make those connections better, I mean technology is a solution to better connect with customers. Um, now um, it's also, um, it can, you know, it, it's a two-edged sword, right? And technology can be the thing that um, can be disruptive, it can, it can also put customers at arm length from uh, brands as opposed to bringing them together. But hopefully with the right organizational strategy, which has to come first, mm -hmm. and then technology solutions. Yeah, as Jeff Frick always says, it could be either creepy or magical using the data because exactly. the measurement piece is critical. And you know, we talk about this on theCUBE, but I want to get your take on this, is that you know, with the confluence of the cloud, which is like unlimited compute theoretically, Amazon Web Services shows a great path for shadow IT. Now we're seeing cloud being used for shadow marketing, standing up quick things, fast technology. And then you got the data pieces of this that were once in silos. The right. Email marketing, destination driven, you know, commerce transaction or sales oriented, salesperson oriented. Here's a bunch of leads to B2C, um, you know, personalization. Now with a whole nother user experience going on, with mobile, Facebook just announced their earnings, smashed the results with mobile. So you're seeing now the user's role as pretty paramount. So what's your, what, what do you see as the pattern for that, that trend around the CMO boardroom conversation? Because they obviously want to invest. Um, there's a technology component to it. There's a couple How things. How do they reconcile those two things? Yeah, so I, I would say one, um, the thing, that CMOs say to me almost invariably is, please help me simplify my life. My life has gotten incredibly complicated. I have um, a MarTech um, Overdose. Uh, <laughs> universe with well over 3,000 companies. Um, and I think what has been quite frankly brilliant about the Oracle strategy is sort of slowly pulling those pieces together. Um, and eventually, in, in the, the, the keynote product presentation that we, that we saw today, is now they're starting to put them together into one uh, user interface. So, you know, the email folks don't have to just go to their email and the data and analytics folks, and, and putting that together. So now we're starting to see the integration of, you know, of mm -hmm. technologies that is starting to make life easier for marketers. 
I have a question. I know Peter probably got a ton. It's just, his specialty is digital transformation, but you guys put out a piece with Oracle, the age of the brand, agency, and customer collaboration, how to make it work. Is out there, it's in, it's, in the, it's in the handouts. But that brings up the question of, with cloud comes automation. Making things simpler usually means reducing the steps it takes to do something. Right. AKA, <coughs> agencies, hello. Um, the automation and some of the, some of the new tech is actually shifting the role of what is going to be kind of abstracted away, if you will. And so where does the value shift? So the agencies are now under a lot of pressure. Yes. Huge pressure, the bloom is off the rose. That, the ROI is now the central conversation. It's not just, you know, nice demo and you get the big client, you know, contract. Everything's measurable. There's a couple things happening and, and actually, quite frankly, that was surprising because having sort of live, live in this space, um, agencies are under siege, right? I mean, the model is broken. Um, and so the research we did was to kind of find out what is this relationship like? And actually we found out that marketers are looking for, for deeper collaboration. They're looking for solutions. They don't have, the roles are changing. Uh, marketers are bringing on um, skill sets that you would have previously uh, been inside the agency. So what is the agency now? So what the agency brings is, is sort of the massive scale um, and um, particularly when it comes, when it, the world of mm -hmm. advertising and data is coming together under the world of artificial intelligence, machine learning, and programmatic buying, right? That is, that is happening in, in such a fundamental way. And that is, all, that's a game about scale. Now does, maybe Procter & Gamble is somebody who can scale, but can the average company scale, own that technology, have owned the relationships with hundreds of millions of consumers to have that data set? Probably not. And the tech, role of technology further complicates the equation because do the agencies have the skill set? Certainly they might have mega mergers going on with global scale and reach, but do they have the people? Well, I guess, I, I think, <laughs> that is I a think, good point. I think, uh, uh, to your point, that the agencies, the, the state of the art in marketing has been tr traditionally been driven by agencies. Correct and agencies would say, here's the state of the art in advertising, oh, by the way, it's tied to buying ads. Here's the state of the art in email, oh, by the way, it's tied to sending out more email. <laughs> uh, the metrics that we're using, we're going to define. Uh, it's not uncommon uh, to go into an account, go into a large marketer and say, how are you spending your money? And discover that one third of the money they're spending with an agency, the agency is using to prove that they're getting value out of the other two thirds. <laughs> um, one of the things that's interesting about this, and this is the question, is the conversation, because of the role of data, is now driving to the role that technology is going to play within marketing, especially because customers want to be engaged digitally. Yes. And the agencies are not positioned to lead that conversation. And I, and I, I have a sense that they feel a little bit put out by the whole thing. What's, your, what, what's yeah. your sense? Are the, are the agencies ready to follow or are they ready to become more technological savvy so they can once again participate in setting the standard for the state of the art in marketing? Well, part of that whole conversation around scale is this technology arms race that's happening, particularly on the agency side and the rise of the strategic um, advisory firm all of whom now have major advertising agency um, divisions. Accenture, Deloitte. Uh, Deloitte's a, a sponsor here, Accenture's a sponsor. Um, they are, you know, they bring this strategy and tech integration um, skill set, and they're just buying up talent for creative. So if you can marry creative and the strategic um, analysis and perspective, and plus the technology implementation um, experience. Now that's a whole new world, and they're and they're for right now they're they're tending to win the race. Now on the traditional agency side, and on the traditional agency holding company side, they're moving into 
they're moving in strategic advisory. Yeah, they're trying to buy little consultancies and they're little making, tech exactly. boutique shops too. Yes. So as you think about it, uh, you do a lot of research with CMOs. Um, what problems are they no longer worried about because technology helped them solve them four years ago? And what's keeping them up at night now that they're looking at a show like this to provide answers about? Uh, it's a great question. Um, I, no longer worried about, I don't think I've ever met one that's no longer worried about. Um, Something. <laughs> I, think, um, I, think what they're, I think what they're worried about is, um, to, is ha one having, do they have the skill sets and capabilities inside their organization to orchestrate the incredible, incredibly powerful um, and enabling technology that's available. And, and then two, are they, do they have the ability to stay ahead of that curve? And are they you know, not locking themselves into some solution that's outdated in two years and you know, the whole world's going to go to a chatbot system and you know, we've, we've built in a, you know, an email, a world for email that no longer exists. You know, so that, that keeps them up at night. So well, basically, a miss, a miss on the investment thesis of a some miss area. On the investment, you know, technology investments. Yeah. I mean, they're 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 they have to have a portfolio approach to, tech, to their technology investments, and they have to have a test and learn and experimentation, and um, those those are not skill sets that you would normally have associated with marketing leadership yeah. five years ago. Well, the whole agile thing comes up, and you mentioned the scale part of the agency. Cloud and big data and mobile bring us element of speed on yes. execution. So agile, agility is a developer concept that's moving into marketing, it's interesting. So scale implies bloatedness, and implies <laughs> slowness. So how do you get this critical mass of say global scale or footprint scale with agility? Um, so that kind of brings to, you know, generic is an open question, but I'd like to get your thoughts on that in context to the trend we saw on the IT side. Shadow IT was enabled by Amazon, right? right? Shadow IT became the the, the forcing function for everyone to kind of get off their butts and Mark Hurd talked about this candidly with me in January. So where is that going on marketing side? Like is there a shadow marketing development? Like what are marketers doing to kind of circumvent pre-existing roadblocks? Are you seeing anything like that, similar dynamics? I, I think maybe the difference in the evolution of this whole process with the marketing side of the organization is I don't think they're going to fall in love with the technology. I mean, on the IT side, you know, you have religious wars over technology, right? I, I don't, you know, because, because marketers are, have been forced to be technologists, not technologists yeah. by trade. Um, you still have to have all the skill sets around communications and creating emotional bonds with customers and moving them through, through a uh, decision funnel and persuasive uh, communications. Those things are still at core of what marketers do. Technology enables it, and it doesn't happen without technology. The scale is where technology comes in, because now you have to have those, those, that communication in real time. You have to have, hopefully, what has become in the expectation, consumer expectations, that you know me. I've come to your website, why don't you know me? So now, can you actually, because they'll go somewhere where you do. Um, you know, why do I, um, you know the, the first the the barrier for frustration over uh, uh, the friction between uh, company services or products and buying ha has to be decreased tremendously, or people are gone. And technology is the only way to to solve that problem. Bruce, thanks so much for coming on the Cube and sharing your insights here about the marketing tech. I'll give you the final word for the folks watching uh, who aren't here at the event. Share share the the top level. Thing, pattern that you're seeing in, in the CMO world relative to MarTech and the complexities. You mentioned some things earlier. What's the top line trending item, that pattern you see over and over again, whether it's a solution focus or uh, anecdotal observation? Yeah, so I think bottom line, CMOs are looking for um, overarching solutions that help solve their problems. And they're looking for solutions that have longer lifespans and that um, are open architecture that allows innovation to take place. All right, and you got the paper out there on Forbes and we're all contributing on Forbes. Check out Forbes Insight, 
CMO Insight, Bruce Rogers, Chief Insight Officer of Forbes Media. This is theCUBE, extracting that insight here, sharing that with you. We'll be right back with more from live from Las Vegas coverage. I'm John Furrier with Peter Burris. We'll be right back after this short break.